Welcome to season one of Top Crop. We found out that the ground is alive. Trying to get done a little quicker and trying to simplify things a little bit. You know, there's only so much money to go around. I look for big wins. That's how they move. You want it at 50? That's half now. That's half. Hang on. Morning, everybody. This is Shelby Fight with Top Crop. A busy day today on the farm. It's the middle of September. We're doing a little bit of tiling before we get into harvest. So we'll, uh, you know, really excited to be able to tile and get some water away from some of these fields that are just too poorly drained for us. So um, fun job, and we'll show you a little bit of that. Also going on behind us this morning is combine maintenance. We're getting everything ready for harvest, making our equipment fleet is ready to go as we can get it so guys are busy working on machines this morning yeah, we're just looking everything over the machine uh, this is a new machine so just checking over everything making sure everything's in order not a whole lot uh, everything's been greased just a few minor things buttons and a few loose bolts and things but before long this will be ready to go to the field Things are starting to change and everybody's starting to get a little itchy, ready to go to the field. A lot of stuff that we check to make sure like belt tensioners or the washer is supposed to be flush with this little notch right here just to make sure all the belts are tensioned up and tightened up and check to make sure everything's greased. If this had a couple years and had, had been used, we'd blow all the air filters out, change all the oils, fuel filters, check air pressure in the back tires, you know, you don't have to worry about it in the front having the tracks, but just check over everything, make sure all the belts look good, chains are good. We were at 780s, 780 combines, and we went to 790s just to have a class series bigger, more capacity. Wanted to get back to tracks. It seems like any more of the Mother Nature's making it hard on us, so anything, the tracks really are great when it gets wet outside, better, better flotation, you don't tear up the fields, just every, makes everything in the fall go a lot smoother. A lot of it with the dialing in, you know, that all comes before we even get this out. That all comes with all the Ag Explorer products that we use. Anything to help make a bigger crop, better test weight, bigger beans, um, anything to help make yield. So then when this comes through, then we know that it's uh, everything that we did or we used is uh, worth its money. I mean, the biggest thing is just uh, getting it set. When you first get to the field, getting it set, make sure you're not throwing any you know, we'll cut beans first, so the biggest thing is just getting them out in the field, get, get them out, make sure that you're not blowing any beans out the back, getting a good clean sample, making sure you're getting all the beans knocked out of the pods, and the best thing, the best thing you can do is keep all the trash out of the grain tank that you can. Sometimes that, uh, that, is, a, that is a problem, yes. But uh, we've had really good luck with the John Deere combines, really enjoyed them. Um, this will be going on the sixth year of having the green ones so we've been very thrilled with having the john deere combines great bean cutting machines so that's really helped us in capacity and getting beans cut in a timely fashion gotta pay the bills so you know as many bushels as we can get uh just you know making sure the guys can get everything dialed in and you know we're in the grain carts making sure samples look good as well so all the hard work, it always seems like we just planted yesterday, but you know, all the hard work that's went into it of maintaining that crop throughout the year is coming to an end and it's gonna be really exciting to see how we end up. What's all the white powder? That's talc, because the tracks oh. are new to break the tracks in. Oh, now I see it on the wheels. Yeah, so that wouldn't heat the tracks up and ruin the bogey wheels. Good job.
triangle patch, so we can make her all fit though. And we put some um, the eight inch main in the other day, and before we were done for the day, it already was running water through it. So that's an excellent sign that it's working, and we'll be able to get any excess water off the field and have a lot better uh, crops in here, no wet holes. So we're excited to plant it next year. Team's working hard. A lot of Chiefs, not a lot of Indians, so that's okay. <laughs> Tinkerbell's on scene. She loves the tile. Loves it. He's just trying to do it since we're doing these angles. Fun side we're using is Veltima because our third year with it, it's been working great. Uh, there has been some tar spot already spotted in Northern Ohio. Normally we've already flown all of this corn, but we was able to wait until July 26 today. It's already past blister stage, starting to fill out already. We've been able to keep disease pressure away, and the Veltima should, that should protect us all the way through the rest of the season. We've really been fine-tuning our in program over the past couple of years and running some products that are really making a difference with this early season root growth. So we love our Pivot Bio, using that product number one, and then we're adding some things to not only feed that Pivot Bio, but feed the corn plant as well. So some sugar sources, a carbon source, just trying to get these little plants off to the best start we can get them. I wanna, I wanna tell you something back here too. All right. All right, we'll stop. We'll just stop right here. Let everybody gather in around. Okay, look around on this corn. I mean, we've had some kind of a growing season, haven't we? Uh, it's been fantastic. And when we get out there, we'll talk more about your specific questions. But give me your assessment of this corn. Give me your opinion of what we're going to have in the fall. But if you were to walk out into this cornfield right now, does anything grab your attention? Sure. The girth of the ears seems like one thing. Kevin, you see anything that grabs your attention? Like the doubles? What you, like you guys are not looking close enough. You got a teachable moment right in front of you. <laughs> Look at the leaves. They're green? Yeah, they are. <laughs> There's tar spot. You're all surrounded by tar spot right now. So we've been talking about tar spot, and I guess if you look, look, look right here. That's upper canopy, isn't it? So you guys have been wanting to know what tar spot really looks like if you find it. Here it is. And my point is, and the reason we did what we did is because we tend to walk in fields and we look at what we're accustomed to looking at and we overlook things a lot. And don't feel bad, we all do this, but this, and I asked Todd, I said, Todd, you know, you okay with me coming back in here and looking at all this? He said, sure, let's all learn. Gang, there's tar spot from here all the way across the plot. And this is exactly what it is. I want you to look at it. I want you to get familiar with it. This came in at a point where it's not going to be yield prohibitive came in late, but I think the interesting part is, is that it is here. And for those who have been waiting to touch it, and, and, and the thing that I will tell you about tar spot, when you grab one of these leaves, you cannot scrape those lesions off that leaf. Uh, if you were to come out here, maybe earlier in the season, you think, oh no, I got tar spot. The, one, the number one most misdiagnosed problem that gets called tar spot is bug manure on the leaf. Fancy a scientific term for saying bug crap. Okay, we got bug crap on the leaf, but if you scrape it and it comes off, then we know you can't scrape that off. This is moving up the plant now. This stuff has a latent period of 14 or so days, so when we see it, then it's going to cycle again. It's going to sporulate. 
And if you, you can find some leaves over here, and I found some earlier today, where you start to see where there's a higher concentration of the lesions, that that tissue is, is done. It's done. So if something like this happens when we're at pollination or we're entering into grain fill period and we're trying to protect these solar panels, that's when we will have a critical conversation. Yeah, perfect example. It can take that leaf from green to brown in, in less than two weeks, in less than a week if things are really moving along, conditions are good. So not, I'm not raising a big flare and trying to make you panic, but be aware the other thing I will say as a company, the Pioneer, our hybrids, we are so critical about disease scores. We've been trying to pick hybrids with gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, gossip's will, all these different things we, we score for and try to select for. And because of that, we have developed some, some hybrids that are showing really good tolerance to, to uh, tar spot. So out in the Midwest, it's, it's growing our business just because of the health and, and uh, the nature of our hybrids. So this was a great chance to come out and actually see what everybody's been talking about for two years and kind of make a mental note of what it looks like. Don't stick any of this in your pocket and take it home with you. Okay? It's already there, huh? Might be. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. Fun side we're using is Veltima because our third year with it, it's been working great. Uh, there has been some tar spot already spotted in Northern Ohio. Normally we've already flown all of this corn, but we was able to wait until July 26 today. It's already past blister stage, starting to fill out already. Clearly we've been able to keep disease pressure away and the Veltima should, that should protect us all the way through the rest of the season. In the past three years, we're 365 GDUs behind schedule. So that is one of our concerns here. You know, if we don't have solar, we don't have GDUs, we don't have photosynthesis, we don't have energy into that plant. So that's where, when you guys approach about Architect, and being able to add that on at that V5 time frame, I was really excited for it. Definitely looks like it's doing its job here. I'm excited to take it to yield and see if we can't get it on every acre next year. We're here at the Farm Progress Show here in uh, Decatur, Illinois. Obviously a very exciting time of year where you can see almost anything pertaining to agriculture. Uh, so obviously a lot of people here are very excited. Uh, what we're hoping uh, to bring to the table from BSF side of things is just to continue to be able to answer any questions about our products. Uh, we've got a great portfolio ranging from herbicides to fungicides to insecticides, as well as some very new key products that we're launching in the years to come. So just trying to answer as many questions and help as many people as possible. Yeah, my name is Mike Probst. I'm a technical service representative for BASF uh, covering the southern half of the state of Illinois. And so I provide uh, local expertise on any of our products related to what growers are using in the field. So BASF uh, initiated the Operation Weed Eradication, which is basically a, an industry-wide initiative to try to change the mindset that we take when we approach weed management to make sure that we're trying to eliminate as many of those weeds as possible, even those ones there at the end of the year that may be uh, hiding out in the field uh, and placing an emphasis on those as being the most important ones to make sure that we have to control. We try to educate on the best ways that we can use the tools that we have at our disposal. So at BASF, we specialize in uh, herbicides and, and that type of chemical. We are utilizing those products in a way that we are, are gonna put them in a place that they are gonna be most successful. We know that weed control is not just about chemicals, there are several other factors that go into that overall puzzle of successful weed control. So we've also brought in university researchers uh, as well as folks in the industry who make uh, machinery and tillage equipment because we know that those all play a factor in terms of successful weed control. So uh, we've got chemical weed control, we've got mechanical weed control, and also focusing on some cultural weed control and what are some practices that growers can do to try to make weed control more successful and, and eliminate those weeds as much as possible. 
Uh, within BSF, we've got some very key chemicals that we know are going to be effective on our most troublesome weeds. Uh, those specifically being uh, Zidua as a uh, really quality residual herbicide that's going to prevent weed emergence, which is always the best way to control weeds, as well as uh, a herbicide uh, known as Liberty that is very flexible across a lot of the trait platforms that we're using, especially in soybeans, but still very effective for controlling those water hemp. Yeah, most of what we're doing is just trying to gauge farmer interest in it and seeing what if that mentality is kind of taking hold and, and who's really believing in the possibility of doing that. I know there's some skepticism around it because weed control can be so difficult, but right now we're just trying to get as many people on board and trying to have that mindset because we know the longer that we fight these weeds, the more difficult they're gonna be to control. So uh, just trying to get as many people on board as possible. At the end of the day, that's what this is all about, uh, is being sustainable and making sure that we're able to farm these acres year over year over year. When we think about what those weeds are out there and, and why those remaining weeds are out there, it can be a little scary because it could be a sign that you have resistance. It could be a sign that you're selecting for some tougher to control weeds. And that's why we want to control those because uh, the more that, though, that we have those weeds out there, the more difficult they're going to be con to control in the future. So uh, it's all about preserving uh, what we have and making sure that we can continue to farm so, over the next several years we're going to see some really key crop protection products as well as some of those new soybean varieties that we're coming up with uh, here in the next several years so a uh, very exciting time the side we're using is veltima because our third year with it it's been working great uh, there has been some tar spot already spotted in northern ohio normally we've already flown all this corn but we was able to wait until July 26 today. It's already past blister stage, starting to fill out already. We've been able to keep disease pressure away and Veltima should, that should protect us all the way through the We've really been fine tuning our in program over the past couple of years and running some products that are really making a difference with this early season root growth. So we love our Pivot Bio. Using that product, number one, and then we're adding some things to not only feed that Pivot Bio, but feed the corn plant as well. So some sugar sources, a carbon source, just trying to get these little plants off to the best start we can get them. I'm Russell Hedrick and welcome back to Top Crop. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Top Crop Challenge. The Top Crop Challenge is for any farmer in the United States that wants to improve their return on investment, which is one of the things that Top Crop TV focuses on, maximizing yield, but also maximizing return on investment to the farmer. Top Crop TV, Soil Regen, and Regen Ag Labs out of Nebraska are coming up with the Top Crop Challenge that you can participate in and let us know what your results are on your farm like we've seen on our farm. So this year, we did a trial on our farm that we've talked about a lot where we utilized the Millic 3 test, which is our state test, versus the Haney test. The Haney test called for 10 more pounds of phosphorus and a quarter pound more boron, but we actually applied 47 pounds less fertility to those acres where we used the Haney test than where we used Millic 3. The results came out that we were almost 15 bushels better beans where we had used the Haney test over the conventional Millic 3. Producers around the country can go to topcroptv.com and you can see a link to the login or you can go to agsoilregen.com and you can download the sample submittal form to send in your test for Haney test and your conventional test. So what we would like producers to do is to pull a few fields, do the Haney test and their conventional test, apply the appropriate amounts of fertility recommendations based off of those two and then send us back the results and see if you're getting a better return on investment with new biological testing over the conventional test. What we're offering to producers is a 10% discount uh, for this one-time deal with Top Crop TV. So if you download the sample submittal form from either website, send your samples to the lab, you'll receive a 10% 10, 10 discount. Send us back the results at the end of next season. Let us know how it worked for you and if you saw a positive gain on your farm as well.
come back and lay the tile. That one track is just spinning. He couldn't go any farther, so the gig's gonna put the news in. Uh, some of our later planted beans and with this field we've been trying to influence soybean test weight with the later planting dates um, gave up a few nodes so you know maybe not as much potential from the start just by you know getting in the middle of May to plant here rather than some of those April planting dates like our other fields. So, um, you know, my thought here is maybe I, you know, gave up a couple nodes, lost a few bushels, but can we make up for that with some late season R5 applications that will hopefully influence test weight? So ran um, our full year product at R5, proprietary Ag Explore product. And we also added um, XR5 KSB to the pass, which is another Ag Explore product. So, you know, with some of these late uh, nutrient applications, hopefully we can just have these plants hang on for a little bit longer and make some big beans. They look healthy, starting to senesce a little bit. You can tell here at the bottom, you know, it's a trade-off with I want them to grow as long as I can, but you know, obviously don't want to be out here still waiting for them to mature in December. So um, hopefully we get some rains, a couple more rains I would like. Mm -hmm. Get these as fat as we can get them, big beans and make big bushels. Looks like more to me. I should t take these back and count them all and go. see what the difference is. But I mean, these two compared to this one, it's just. You can feel it. And that's something too where, you know, just walking in different spots of the field, what's going on, that's something I need to refer back to soil test and see because they're really good in some places, but some other places they're not, not quite as tall and, I mean, just don't feel as heavy, so. We've been trying to even this field out. We've done a lot of variable rate nutrient applications over the last few years. Good amount of chicken litter, good amount of lime flat, but we have a couple rolls and a couple places that just don't seem to produce as well. So it's been a little bit of a try and, and see how you know flat and even we can get it. I can't complain. Uh, they're looking better than I thought. So we'll see you in the combines roll. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio.